Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about work-life balance. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made which was called How do you become a rock star developer within one year? And I basically tell people that rock star developer is just a term that most uh, like recruiters and companies use for PR and like, uh, you know, in uh, social media posts, uh, no self-respecting software developer calls themselves a rockstar developer. And the essence of it is that uh, if you want to be really good in one year, you have to work really, really hard and ideally just focus on the stuff that is that matters to the company itself because there is, there is simply too much to know. Like There is no way you're going to become a senior software developer in one year. Never. It's never going to happen. And the, uh, the, I think I made a comment there that most of there is a reason why most uh, senior level software developers are mid uh, middle aged, uh, balding guys usually. There are women, of course, as well, but the, that's the norm. And so this uh, subscriber writes, "Great video. Can I become a good developer but still have a balanced lifestyle?" The part where you talked about balding senior dev scared me a bit. Appreciate your thoughts. Well, uh, of course you can have a balanced la lifestyle, guys. That that's not the issue here. And if the thing about balding senior scared you, then I think that you should really take a to do a little bit of a reality check, guys. Guys, is there anyone or is there a single one of you who has hit twenty by now and thought to yourself, you know what? I'm going to win the Olympics. Do you realistically think that you have now, if you start right now, the ability to to invest this amount of time that would be necessary and build up your fitness level to a point where you could do that? Maybe you could. I don't know. I'm just saying that the average Olympic athlete trains from literally the time they can walk until they're about in their 20s to be able to compete at that level. And so maybe an idea like that would not be fully realistic. And the same thing goes be when you decide when you're in your 30s or 20s or whatever, like, oh, I'm going to be a software developer. You can become a software developer, but you're not going to be a senior. Just because you decided later on in life that you are going to learn how to be a programmer, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to... I, mean, I hope that that makes sense to you guys. There is a amount of time that is necessary to invest in order to reach a certain level of skill. Guys, I have been working for... 88 years? 10 years soon? Something like that as a software developer? Full time? Non done. That's been my primary profession for for quite some time now, uh, and I can with confidence tell you guys that I am still learning stuff. And although I have reached a level now where I am balding and I am a bitter old senior, or like depending on if you want to call me a senior or not, I I've said this before. My definition of senior is a little bit different, but the for most people I would be referred to as a senior and I have skills that can in many cases outweigh like um, uh, it's on par or outweigh people with twice my years and sometimes more because when you reach a certain point like I mean uh, guys the, the, some people that I work with they are in their 50s and they have been working since before like when we're, ta we're talking about they were comp they were programming on hardware that did not have a standard operating system, a mainstream operating system. And today, I can match most of their skills with modern day software development, but it takes years to get there. And I train people who are everything from my age to like their like college kids, etc., etc., who just start out. And it they, there is no way they are going to be able to bridge the same level, just as I will never learn as much about like old timey like software development as the people that have been working for longer than me, even though I can reach their skill level, it's not like it took. I did that in a year. It's going to take longer. It took, as I said, it took me around ten years 
to get to a point where I can hold my own with people who have been doing it for 20 years. Because as I've said before guys, it's about the quality of the time that you put in. But that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you work out as like with the fitness thing, if you work out really really hard once a week for a month and then, then you're like, what? Well, then you bridge years and years and years of training. You're not. And so that's what you have to understand guys. Getting an entry level job is absolutely feasible for practically anybody. But getting to be a senior is gonna take years years of really hard work. I promise you that much. There's no discussion that that's going to happen. So when people, and this, I mean, not even the, uh, that's not a promise even made by the people who make the silly, make, learn everything about JavaScript in 10 minutes videos. They are telling you that they're going to teach you how to use JavaScript. But becoming a real senior software developer and understanding IT, because just learning the syntax of a programming language that gives you like no, no, it's not even one percent of the problem. There's an entire world of technology around that programming language that you have to learn and it's gonna take years to get good at it. But learning the basics so you can be useful to a company? Absolutely. And on the topic of balancing your lifestyle, it's actually very simple. I've said this a few times before. Guys, a, a work-life balance comes down to only two, t two things. There's only ever two things that make up that balance and that is number one do you have the skills necessary to meet expectations and get the work that you actually need to get done within your work hours that's number one number two is do you work for people where they understand that you have a desire to have a work-life balance in other words they respect your private time these are the only two factors that matter like the, the, or rather the, the only two main factors that's going to matter then we can talk about your mental states and so forth and so forth but these are the two this these are the f cornerstones in the whole thing and it's actually not more difficult than that if you work for people who just keeps on asking for more and more and more and this is one of i've said this a few times before this is the situation where the best case for you is if you have made sure that you have what i call the option of walking away as long as you have that option, nothing can hurt you, basically, ever. And that is, it's easy to achieve that goal, usually. Well, it depends on you. It usually comes down to everything from making sure that you have relevant skills, because software development skills are in enormously high demand, which means that if this company keeps on asking you to work overtime, etc., etc., if you can walk away and go to another job, then do it. If, that's, if you don't want to put in those extra hours, easy peasy. And apart from that making sure that you have savings so that you can survive for a certain amount of time i mean you can just do the math yourself how long would you be able what would you like to be able to work be out of work or something like that or you can start your own business etc etc maybe do something freelancing etc etc and then finally i go even as far as to say make sure that you have like a worst case scenario type of deal uh, the preppers call it a bug out bag or something like that and i kind of go just make sure that you have the means necessary to live on the like absolute minimum amount that you can possibly imagine and uh, you prepare for that day it's to me it's sort of like buying insurance because if you have these sorts of things in place guys then the worst thing that can happen is that you feel bad over that you're leaving or that you get fired or whatever might happen but physically you are going to be fine then the rest is mindset so what I want you to take away from this is that getting a work-life balance is usually fairly simple because it really only ever comes down to that you need to have the skills to meet expectations within your office hours because if you don't have the skills then like you you're good you're not going to be able to one part is that you're going to feel pretty bad usually and the other thing is that you're going to feel stressed because you can never get your work done on time which is a very important factor that's why you have to put effort into it so that you actually reach those sorts of skill levels that so that you can meet expectations within your office hours and then the other part is that you have to work for people or with people who understand the value of private time and if you don't have people or a manager who understands that they can't keep on asking you to work overtime i mean overtime is a necessary evil sometimes but it's always 
good to have an understanding that there's a give there's like a trade going on here so that it feels comfortable for everybody if you don't get that from your manager then having the option of walking away is the best bet which is as i said it ties back to the first thing do you have the skills because if you have the skills there's not a lack for employment options the only thing that really lack is lacking in it at this point is the skills most people don't actually uh, are actually not that good at software development uh, we have too few people who know what they're doing and so if you have that then you can walk away and then make sure you have savings all of these sorts of things that gives you the I always have the option of walking away and then finally if scare if you are concerned that it will you know if your expectations are that you're going to become a senior software developer in anything less than five years then you are kidding yourself you are kidding yourself to the point where you are almost delusional I would say because as I said before guys if you are considering a see if we consider a senior software developer someone who do applicable for that to be one of like the it's like the high the highest level that you can get within software development usually it is the level where you know everybody wants you that is the same level of investment as someone who has become a professional bodybuilder or a professional something something it's not something that just happens it takes years to get that good you don't have to be that good to get a job in software development because you can become a junior and you can start out somewhere but don't think that you know you understand that this is a significant investment it's going to take a lot of time to get to that sort of skill level it's not impossible but it's not something that you know just because you decide today that you're gonna become a software developer then you're gonna have all the all that skill built up in you know a few months etc etc in a few months it takes statistically one to five years you're gonna be good enough at programming to get an entry-level job because this is a significant investment and it's a higher form of education and if you look around you will hear the same thing from most people who work in higher educations and that is that this is roughly the amount of time it takes them as well to get to that sort of level ask your doctors your lawyers your uh, your um, architects etc etc it takes time to get good at stuff have a great day